So there's a number of ways I could start this video and um, the one I've chosen is how do you buy a small portable SSD based touch multi-mode laptop with SSD and free Microsoft Office for 320 euros? Uh, the answer is you can't, but you can build it using the Lenovo Flex 10. And I've just finished a review of the Lenovo Flex 10 for, for notebookcheck.net. Uh, you can check out the full review there. And I have to say, I really like the Flex design. I think it really fits perfectly with the way laptops can be used today with touch. And it kind of, it fits perfectly because the yoga style devices in my opinion are just a little bit too much for a 1 to 1.4 kilogram pc tablet that tablet mode doesn't really work for me and i think that mode works really nicely you can have it on the table you can use a touch screen when you're having breakfast when you're on the train plane in the back of the car it really is a nice clean solution so i've got the lenovo flex 10 here and i'm not going to go over it because i've done the full review for notebook check but what i'm going to tell you about is the ssd upgrade i've done so on umcportal.com you'll see the text the report on how to upgrade the lenovo flex hard drive to an ssd i chose a my digital ssd for this but i think you can get a sand disk from amazon.com 128 gig one for about 70 dollars right now which is a real bargain price and and what you can see here is that i've got it set up as my desktop we've got office running on the on the large screen here i've got a free office license uh, we've got dual screen mode here just to, to prove that it is uh, dual screen let me just drag the window across so you can see i haven't got the the window set up the right way around but there it is over there can you see that um we've got usb3 docking port here i've got a gigabit ethernet connected to this external audio i did have an ssd hard drive plugged into it what else um nothing much actually uh else plugged in it's running um vga sorry dvi over usb3 on this solution as well so so let's unplug that and i'll um and i'll show you uh, around the device just very quickly. So the key features are it's a lightweight netbook style device. It's 270 euros in, in, in Europe right now. I think about $320. I expect that price to come down in, in the US to one to 299. Um, nice keyboard, lightweight, plasticky but strong build. And it's got this uh, flex mode here, which I just think is great for coffee and news in the morning. I really like it and it really fits this design, uh, you know, it fits with this weight of, de of device. Ports are good, you've got USB 3, you've got a full HDMI output put here so you can drive screens. You haven't got an SD card output, but you have got volume rocker switch on the, on the side in, instead. Um, upgrading is not too difficult. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through the full process because I've got pictures on, on umcportal.com, but these two um, stoppers here, feet, they just pop out, they're on a little latch, and underneath that one is a, a plastic seal that you'll have to break or a paper seal you have to break and then a screw underneath and there's a screw underneath this one just use your thumbnail to go around the edge it's pretty tough on these corners here and here be careful you'll probably cut your nail underneath your nail on that i did uh, drew blood when i did that bit so it's not that easy to get apart but be careful and work your way around and you'll get it apart and i'm going to do it offline i'm just going to switch this camera off and do this uh, offline because it does take a few minutes and I don't want to uh, to make any mistakes by being you know, forced through use of the, uh, the video here. In fact, maybe, maybe, maybe I can't actually do it. What I should do is turn it off though, shouldn't I? So let me just shut that down. I'll come back to you. So that last bit here is that, I remember, this is the awkward bit on this corner, that's it. There you go, it just lifts off nicely. So inside you'll see uh, what I didn't mention earlier is this is a fanless device as well. So it actually makes a really good media center because it's completely silent. No fan in here. And once you swapped out the hard drive to the SSD, it's uh, completely silent. So actually it's really worth interesting, take, worth um, 
and interesting to, to take a look at this design here. There's the motherboard. That's how small it is now. It's taking a third of the pl of the space within the unit. Um, there's a keyboard like just a millimeter above that. Here's obviously the SATA uh, hard drive. It's very easy to take out. I've got this mounting bars on the side. Unscrew those and it'll pop out very easily. Swap the SSD in there. And it's, um, I've got a seven mil hard drive in here. I think it's a seven mil <coughs> max thickness you can put in there. This is the, the original one. And this is the same uh, height. So it's a seven mil height on that uh, Hitachi drive. That by the way, is a 320 gig version and it's not very good. It's actually pretty poor and it's the real bottleneck in this system. Once you put that SSD in, the thing really comes to life. Um, boot times go down to 10 seconds. Uh, starting up apps, for example, um, Chrome will go from three seconds down to one second. Um, basically, it's about 50% um, improvement in, in startup times of all apps. And then you've got things like virus scans, which take a quarter of the time it would take on a hard drive. So it really makes it uh, usable. And it just basically frees up the system. And then, then of course, the limits you've got are the processor and the GPU. And the processor on this is a single, uh, it's a dual core. Uh, no, it's a single core with hyperthreading. Dual core, um, which is not that strong. It's about, about twice as powerful as an old netbook. Um, but it, with the SSD, it doesn't give you any sort of major problems. The user interface, certainly on modern, is good. Gaming is fine on modern. No desktop gaming at all. Uh, don't do any video ed editing on this. Um, and if you're going to do this for sort of serious office work, there will be limits, let's face it. But for blogging uh, and for general usage, uh, I really think this is, uh, this is enough. The speakers are there and despite their uh, large size, they're actually terrible speakers. So <laughs> maybe there's a possibility of swapping those out to something bigger. There's even space left in here, there's space here. And you wonder what might go in there or I might have gone in there. Um, 3G module perhaps, don't know. Um, anyway, it looks quite uh, quite nice. So that's that's how you swap the S SSD out. And let me just put the back on, and I'll uh, show you boot up speeds and uh, maybe some startup speeds with some apps. So let's just uh, turn that on. It's about a four second uh, post, and then uh, I think you'll find that was probably in hibernation. So that's that was a hibernation. Oh, I believe I shut that down actually. Sub ten second uh, boot anyway. Um, so let's just show you how that works on the USB. Uh, Whoa. And the good thing about this one is you can use, this is a tablet module, you can open the device up into a tablet style device, just drop it in there, and USB 3, um, just in that one, not in the HDMI port. <laughs> and of course you can put the power in there if you want to as well. Now that's just going to go to full screen, I'm going to, to, to log in. And then, um, one second, with, oh, well, there was a B in here for a minute. So, um, oh, let's just uh, tidy those, um, tidy those, uh, tidy those up a bit. Right, let's just, uh, let's get um, Office uh, started up for you or at least uh, Word, and uh, that's over here. So Word 2013, let's see how long it takes to, to start up. I think it was under 10 seconds when I tested it earlier. That's all coming from the SSD. Now on the uh, hard drive version, it's gonna be at least twice that speed. So that's up and running in, in under 10 seconds there and uh, really uh, no problem. So uh, let's get uh, Chrome up, boom. That is one second to get Chrome up there. This, um, what is this app? This app takes 10 seconds on the hard drive version. So Lenovo Photos app. So it takes 10 seconds. Boom, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half, six, yeah, six seconds. Or is it still doing some updates there? I think it might be just doing some updates or it's doing something. Am I connected to the net here? That wasn't a great uh, demo, but um, what else can we do? Well, that just took a little bit longer than I expected, that one. 
Um, also, things like uh, games. Uh, installing games is a fast experience, and uh, I really think um, if we go to do, 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 top three games, um, you'll see that uh, it's all there. Everything's working nicely as well. So, for example, Asphalt uh, 8, I even got working. I think that's probably about the limit of this of uh, the graphics. But Pinball FX was working nicely. Um, what else did we have? We had F18 Fighter. I forget what it was. Yeah, that was uh, that was working well as well. So, all in all, oh, I think this is uh, trying to give me an update on that. I don't want an update on that. So anyway, um, it is working really well, and it's 370 euros. No, 270 euros in Europe. Let me. Uh, let me bring that up for you, the pricing on that. Go to my favourite pricing site, GateSales.at, Lenovo Flex 10. And in Europe, the cheapest price is now $259 a euro. So that's come down another 10 euros since I last uh, saw that. 259 euros is a great price on Amazon. Dot com. Let's have a look for um, Lenovo Flex 10. Um, doesn't seem to be as widely, oh, there you go, it hit $299 now in the US, so it's under $300 now. An SSD is going to cost you 60 to 70 euros uh, dollars for a 64 or 128 gig if you can find a decent offer. SanDisk, look for SanDisk on Amazon.com, you'll find, I hope, uh, this, uh, the 128 uh, gig SSDs on offer now for for seventy euros, seventy dollars. So all in all, I think this is one of my favourite uh, netbooks that I've tested in a long, long time. It is compact. It is got that nice netbook feeling to it. It's got that SSD upgrade capability. It's touch. It's got that flex mode. Uh, you've got USB three. You've got HDMI. You've got a reasonable graphics set. You've got a a video decoder which will easily take you up to 30 or 40 megabits a second of hardware decoded video so things like XBMC run on this uh, open elect with booted from USB stick on this and that works really really nicely um, screen quality isn't br brilliant it's a 1366 by 768 screen and, and the colors aren't that punchy uh, that's the trade-off you get the plastic is a little bit yes plastic uh, there's no upgradable battery or, or replaceable battery there's no uh, SD card slot either uh, battery by the way is 24 watt hours brings you about four hours worth of web working time six hours maybe a video watching so uh, good for a flight good for for weekends away I think keyboard is, is actually quite nice it's a little bit wider and you know what it reminds me of this this just came in from a friend the other day he wanted some work done on it look how similar that is it's the old Acer Aspire 1 this is on AMD C50 this is way more powerful actually a little bit lighter as well and with that SSD actually she absolutely uh, flies so that is my recommendation actually for a really nice neat netbook style device pick one of these up and go and do the SSD upgrade and you've got yourself a really really capable little netbook I love it. Flex 10 and uh, obviously the other Flex uh, um, models 14 and 15 and a 13 in some regions as well. Let's hope they make a Flex 11 with a Bay Trail M quad core and a small SSD inside with an IPS screen and maybe add that SD card slot in and you've really got something very very special indeed I think. This is great. This is the new netbook and I love it and uh, um, if you've got one of these, if you've done the upgrade let me know, uh, comments uh, below. Don't forget to like the video so that I uh, get some support to do more of these videos. It costs money to buy these things and get the SSDs upgraded and do the, the testing and stuff. So umpcportal.com is where the article is, you'll see that up there. Just search for uh, Lenovo Flex 10 SSD, you'll see the, the upgrade notes uh, and uh, this video will be embedded there as well. Good. Thanks for watching. Next up, um, what have we got? I've just finished testing the HP X2 Pro or HT Pro X2 410, which is a Core i5 fanless based tablet dockable two in one, uh, which is quite an interesting, nice product. Um, a little bit on the heavy side for my liking, but uh, it's actually quite a professionally targeted device with a nice screen. Uh, that review will be going up on notebookcheck.net over the next uh, day or two, so check out that. That's what I'm doing uh, the reviews now. They're going on notebookcheck.net. And I think we've got coming up next the Acer Aspire Switch 
10, which is the upgrade, the follow-on to what I regard as one of the best Clover Trail generation two-in-ones, the, the W510. I don't know a lot of people had this and uh, enjoyed it as well. Had that great battery life because of the battery and the, the base. And it was a very well-priced unit as well. It will go up against devices like the, yeah, the Mix 210, for example, and of course the Transformer T100 is the, the main competitor for that. So that's coming in next week for a test. Again, for notebookcheck.net, the full review will be up there. Check them out, they've got some great quality reviews up there. They're really doing a good job at keeping the standard high on the reviews. And uh, I tell you, I thought my reviews were quite good, but uh, those guys, they take it to the next level when it comes to benchmarking, when it comes to quality control, screen testing, noise testing, power testing, heat testing, they've really got it down to a T. So don't forget to check them out, notebookcheck.net. My name's Chippy, at Chippy on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me, say hi Hello, I'd uh, love to hear from you and uh, also love to see you on the next video. So until then, see ya.